as well just explain this. So what we have here is my um, plasma wall gut and the plasma wall bleh, 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 bleh. The plasma ball globe is over there and so that's powered by a little 12 volt supply and it steps that up through one wire to like 3000 volts which I then and before I just use that directly to charge up a smaller capacitor bank in my first prototypes for a Tesla coil which looking back on them this one is a lot more successful and awesome than I realized but yeah so before I just had that charging of a capacitor bank after going through a full bridge rectifier a full bridge rectifier um but now I have a small voltage multiplier which I'll explain later powering charging up a gigantic capacitor bank that runs this Tesla coil through the spark gap so that's basically how all of these setups work that I'm about to show you all right I don't know if you can hear the background noise, but that's just Trump being loud on the TV. Yeah, we invited Trump over at random. So, I have just, after some voltage multiplier experiments and Tesla coil experiments, I just decided to connect a voltage multiplier. I'll explain this. So, plans ball set up as usual, ground there. So, here the voltage multiplier charges up this capacitor bank of one less capacitor than I normally... Ugh. No, actually it's the same amount of capacitors um, that I used before on the Tesla coil, and so the voltage multiplier causes those capacitor be... Capa ah! Those capacitors to be charged up to a higher voltage than 3,000 volts, and I think it makes some improvement on the top, but I probably need to tune the coils. But um, one interesting thing was the first time I tried this, it wouldn't work. And so I had an idea to put a diode facing the opposite direction than the ones in the voltage multiplier um, to the second connection, which is from the plasma wall uh, to charge the capacitors, and that actually worked. Except then you have to take the discharge capacitors straight through the capacitors because it won't go backwards through the diode, obviously. But so I'm kind of surprised that that worked first try, and now. I have some stuff set up, and so, yep, you can see the spark gap maybe a little bit. I'll just put this a little bit more down. There you go. And then, so here is the top. You can barely see it. But I think this does have some voltage improvement. So right now it's actually firing at a higher frequency. Ooh. Yeah. And so you might be able to see. I can't see because the recording thing is covering it up. But yeah, I actually think that improves the voltage quite a lot. Woo! Now it's really picking up speed. For some reason it increases the frequency once it gets turned on. I guess it's probably just something to do with the plasma ball. And then I'll take my miniature sh screwdriver thing and... Oh, that was wimpy. But um, yeah. Now if I adjust this back just a little bit, eh, I don't know if that was just a little bit, but so it's firing at a much lower frequency now, or it should have been firing at a much lower frequency and higher voltage, so you can see, you might be able to see there's a little bit of voltage improvement there. That is loud. So yeah, I'm making an improvement on a spark gap pestle coil. I think if I really want to increase the voltage output on my big one, I can use a voltage multiplier to put more voltage in, but we'll see. Now I'm going to put that back just a little bit more. Whoa. Haha. <laughs> There's ionic wind forming there. So, there we go. Now that's at like full power. Wow, and it's got some really big sparks there. That's great. Um, but it only activates when I put it near it. That's interesting. Hope you can see that. You probably can. But now I'm going to turn off the lights to make it even better. Huh. That's cool. So there's still... Ionic wind forming on those things. It's cool. Okay. This time when I discharge capacitors, it's make more of a spark. Yup. 
All right, lights off time, maybe. Hopefully I can still see, and so can the cam. Whoa, never mind about still seeing. I'll need to put a second light on to do that. Um, oh, I guess I could turn on the, this. Oh, but that'll only turn on when I, I'll be right back. All right, I didn't need to stop that video but I put a flashlight in the corner, so hopefully I can at least partially see. Yeah, that kind of works, except that I have a very messy floor and it's a little bit unsafe to get over. So you might be able to see that. Ooh, what in the world? The flashlight just fluctuated in power. Okay. There we go. I might bring it closer. Ooh. Right. Well, actually, I think it is actually sending tiny bits of sparkage, even when I don't have the thing there. Woof. Okay. Discharging. Pow. Uh, might as well do some more demonstrations here. Here I have a radio. And if I turn it all the way up, there's some weird radio station that keeps on going on the perfect frequency. Okay, that's probably a little bit too low for it to hear. Too low frequency. Ooh, shouldn't have touched that. so I don't think you can. Now I was gonna cover up the spark gap. I'll have, to, I'll have to find a way to do that without disturbing much. Disturbing its setting. Okay, so let's turn off the light and go out. Crash, bang, thunk, ah, meow. Let's not turn off the light. First turn on the, Ooh, that's weird. All right, so it's been like a week or a week and a half since I have uploaded a YouTube video. So I'm going to record random updates to random. But so, but so, um, I haven't uploaded other videos of me testing these smaller coils that my same friend who gave me a lot of this stuff um, made for me because he built a rig for making them and he's gotten pretty good at making them. Um, but so I made a slightly taller and very wide one, which is currently the best outputting one. And I just put a few turns on it randomly and I haven't even tuned it. So I am going to get on insul- Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot to state the obvious. I cleaned the lab and it's already getting messy again. But so yeah, oh, uh, I should have brought the filming thing down here. But if I cover up the screen and drop my phone, and put on the wrong glove, apparently. I can show uh, this Tesla coil, maybe. So let's see if I turn the on switch. Also, I um, zap myself really hard with this capacitor bank, and that made me learn lessons on how to wear insulating, well, on to wear insulating gloves and stuff when I'm working with high voltage capacitor banks. But, so here, if I do that, nothing happens. Oh, because I closed the spark gap. Woof, it's already a minute and 30 seconds of boringness. Now, that spark gap's too wide. I'm using my insulating glove to hold my phone. Okay, there we go. So now, let's see, if I'm to pick up this, I might be able to see around the fan a little bit if it focuses. There we go. You can see that this output is a lot bigger than any of 
And that's the end of that video. Why am I in front of a green screen? Alright, uh, the first time around, I forgot to film in landscape mode. So unless you want to watch this on your phone, then too bad. Wait. Anyway, the last improvement I've made to this Tesla coil, the biggest one of them all, um, the mall. You can't buy this in a mall. I don't know if you heard that, but, um, my liquid-filled capacitor bank keeps on making these little, like, squirting, bubbling noises. And I looked I, at them while it was making it, and there's little bubbles coming off of salt crystals forming in them. So the water seems to be evaporating, or a chemical reaction is occurring, and maybe generally yeah, generating electricity, which is weird. But, yeah. So anyway, the last improvement I've made to this is to, since it wasn't using all the power of the voltage multiplier, and the voltage multiplier sparks were even bigger and a lot brighter and more powerful than the sparks coming off of this, my finger, um, I shortened the voltage multiplier and used the rest of the capacitors, or the capacitors that were being used with the voltage multiplier, um, as a smaller capacitor bank, which I connected to the bigger capacitor bank. And now, for some reason, the sparks are a lot quieter. But it might still mess with the microphone. But, and it didn't really increase the power at all. But what's interesting is that now, little sparks in the air come off of the end. Which you may not be able to see with the background, but... Oh yeah, and I can also touch this. And it doesn't hurt much. Ow, ew, ah, ah. Remember, always discharge your capacitors. Or as Electroboom says, don't kick electricity, because it can kick back. Um, let's see, where can I position this? So that you can... I have to do this the old-fashioned way. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, also make sure that you don't bump your capacitor spark gap. Otherwise, it won't work. Oh wow, okay. That's a better frequency because it has more power. And so now if we turn it on and put this black piece of paper in front of it and focus it, you will probably be able to see better. There. So there are little... Oh, wow. That's cool. Ah. You also probably can't hear me. Ah. 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 But you can see, or you could see, that there were sparks coming off of this, and on camera it actually looks a lot bigger because it focused. But I'll try and do this. I might be able to move the giant, um, extremely black curtains from my room that make my room dark all the time unless the light is on down here so that I can control the light levels in here instead of having to wait till it's dark in order to test something like this in the dark. So, it's now dark enough for me to do the other things, but quick before I do that, I wanted to note, I decided to get out my smaller, my first Tesla coil, and it's, <laughs> like, less, oh, actually, it's about half height, which means that this is, like, 16 inches, I think, tall. Yeah, because this smaller one is 8 inches. But, so, yeah. Just showing how far I've gone, been stuff. Alright, I've got it in the dark and you can't see a thing. And of course my sister chose this moment to be playing loud music. But you, oh boy, you can't even see it. I can't even focus because I can't even see it. Oh, you can almost focus. Whoa, there we go, that's cool. So that is the end right there and you can... Barely see the spark gap. Wow, it's not even enough light for it to focus. I'm gonna point the flashlight that I have over here that seems to not be bright enough at it. Oh wow. <laughs> Didn't know lighting was this important. Is there something on my lens? Nope, it just was extremely unfocused. Okay. There. Yeah, you can still see it, but now you have enough light to see the Tesla coil. Since I have it against a black background and dark here. 
And if I, maybe if I stop trying to focus. There we go. Try and get as close as I can without zapping my phone. Wow, that's nice. Yep, so that's about all for this video. Except for my outro, I guess. That I don't have an outro. So, why is it not focused? Hello. Huh, that's weird. But yeah, that's the end. You probably couldn't hear what I was saying most of that time, but oh well. One last thing. Always remember to keep your workspace extremely messy when working with high voltage. Oh, and make sure there's stuff all on the side so you can accidentally knock it on the floor and hit your foot with a gigantic nail. Please subscribe for more randomness. Like this randomness. Huh? 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 Ah!